Your clothes dryer is sucking air out of your home, blowing it through the drum with the clothes and exhausting it outside. So in the summertime, you're spending money to cool the air in your home. Wintertime, you're spending money to, to heat the air in your home. And your clothes dryer is taking that air and blowing it outside. That air that it's sucking out of your house is coming back into your home from other areas. It's going to contain moisture. It's going to be too cold in the winter. It's going to be too hot in the summer. And you're going to be spending money to recondition that air. So I want to take and suck the air for the clothes dryer from an external source. And in my case, I take it out of the attic. Some dryers, the back panel comes off. In my particular case, the back panel did not. I took a pair of tin snips and I opened up the back. I made the opening much larger than the louvered area. So we don't want to restrict the air going into the dryer. The exhaust on this dryer is four inch. I use six inch, which is plenty large for the suction side. And I only had two elbows and then a straight shot up into the attic. I had a sheet metal shop make box to fit on the back. I screwed that to the back and sealed every crack and crevice with silicone. I covered it with a foil backed insulation and used foil backed tape to hold everything in place. And you want to seal every little hole and slot that you can find anywhere on the dryer, including the bottom. There's a lot of these holes and slots that are either due to the manufacturing process or what's left over from generation changes and different models on these dryers. And I just went along with either a foil back tape if it was flat or with silicone if it was an irregular area and plugged all those holes. And this is a good time to take your dryer apart, check the belt, clean out the inside with any lint, make sure the rollers are good and the felt on the drum. So when you get done, you put it back together and this thing will run for a long time. You won't have to mess with it again. Whatever you seal up, you want to do it in a fashion to where you can take this dryer apart for maintenance uh, or repair. And I used a electric tape to go around the, uh, the cracks in that for the top and the front and lower panels. And that tape will peel off even several years from now. It'll come off clean. And I also use it around the base of the uh, control console. You have to seal the dryer 100% airtight. If you miss a spot in the wintertime, that cold air up in the attic, cold air is heavier than warm air. And that cold air will come down and it will be leaking out one of the cracks or crevices or holes that you've left unsealed. And you'll know this when you put your hand on the dryer and it'll be icy cold. The dryer might even be sweaty because the warm air in your house, the moisture will be condensing on the dryer. If you have it sealed up correctly, you'll be able to walk over and put your hand on that dryer and it'll be very close to room temperature. I made this modification to our dryer six years ago and it has worked perfectly ever since. We have not noticed a change in the amount of time it takes to dry the clothes. It's still about the same as it was before. It's not a terribly difficult modification to do. You need to study your particular dryer, look at the manual, find out how it comes apart, get your materials together. I did all the modifications on this including running the line up into the attic in two days.